This is what you call a uh, oil metering pump. It's from an RX-7. It's a secondary pump. Most cars have one oil pump. Uh, the rotary has two. As you can see, on the bottom here where it bolts to the side of the block, you have a shaft here. I'm pointing to, which has like a screwdriver tip on it. And next to it has a reservoir. Now, there's a little tab in between here, a little slot where the oil runs off a, a uh, what they call an oil slinger on the side of the block. This keyway is driven by a shaft and along the side of that shaft it has a keyway which is called an oil slinger. We're going to get a little better view of the side of the block in a second here. So you can see what I'm talking about. This is an awful hard position, but here we go. Now as you can see on the side of the block there, There's a slot in here for a screwdriver. And that's the drive that runs, that turns the pump. And alongside here, this little hole here, is called an oil slinger. When this shaft turns, it throws oil out this shaft into the reservoir on the pump. And alongside it is an oil relief hole right here, which allows the oil to go back into the crankcase, the oil that's not being used. As long as that reservoir is kept half or full, or three quarters full, it's plenty. It has its own little shaft and its own little pump mechanism. So now, we're going to go back, look at the pump. Beautiful day in Florida again. Can't beat it. Feel bad for all you people up north. Okay. So now, we come back to the pump. And here's the shaft that turns the pump and here right here behind this is a little oil groove that the slinger throws the oil into which goes into the reservoir which is right here and that reservoir pumps the fluid to these four openings and each one goes to a different spot on the top of the motor to lubricate the rotors when they're under severe pressure especially when you're winding up the high RPMs. This helps the rotors last. Mazda had a lot of problem in the beginning with rotors and oil and they uh, burn up a lot of motors they had to replace, and this was their answer to it, to uh, lubricate the upper cylinders, or I should say the upper rotors. There are no cylinders. So here's the little mystery pump, and here's the lever as you 
press the accelerator, this lever, lever pulls up and it opens up the valve and allows more oil into those metering valves. It had, it's spring-loaded, the spring's off this one, but anyhow, this pump's been modified. We have an opening here for a hose or a line, quarter-inch line. And what we're going to do is we're going to block off this pump and stop the engine oil, the dirty crankcase oil, from going into the upper cylinders. So what we've done, we've put an inlet here for fresh oil and on the back side here where the oil slinger would normally sling the oil into the reservoir and into the motor we've come up with a solution we have a plate thin aluminum plate which is very precision that fits over and bolts in between the motor and the pump. And what it does on the back side, where the O ring is, which is right along here, this is where your O ring groove is, what it does, it isolates the engine oil from the pump so that the new oil, the fresh oil, clean oil, can get fed to the motor instead. It's a very simple way of uh, bypassing the crankcase oil. It actually will allow the slinger to sling the oil into the bypass here and into its uh, re-entry hole which is right right alongside it. There's enough, enough flexibility in this piece of aluminum here for it to bypass it. So we're going to be trying this out. It's a simple solution for a problem that a lot of people don't like the crankcase oil going in upper rotors. I'll be waiting for you is to give me the uh, thumbs up and in the future I'll do a redo on this after I put a couple thousand miles on the automobile to see how everything's working. So over and out for now if you like what you see give me a thumbs up and we'll try to do some more tutorial uh, videos. Thank you very much. This is Ray signing out. Bye.